Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is a continuation of Module 3, Chapter 9, where in the earlier module I covered the time value of money concepts for both present value and future value. We covered four four major uh, examples. We looked at uh, the future value of a single amount, Table 1. We looked at the present value of a single amount, Table 2. We looked at the future value of an annuity for uh, Table 3, and we looked at the present value of an annuity, uh, which was Table 4. And uh, we went through the basics of time value of money, where basically we future value forward and we present value back. Um, so we need to be able to recognize the key site words, deposited, uh, establish a fund to retire. Those types of things generally involve future value. Uh, trying to figure out what something is worth um, in today's money, the site word today generally indicates the type would be a present value. And if there's only one amount that's being paid or received um, in the problem, it's going to be a single amount table. If there's going to be a recurring payment stream or you're going to receive or deposit a series of payments into an account, a retirement account, then it's going to be an annuity payment subtype. So you need to know the type and subtype. Now we're going to apply these concepts to um, how companies issue bonds and how they, the present value of a bond. So you need to understand that the only type that you need to worry about for a bond is going to be the present value type, okay? So present value will be the only type that you need to worry about um, for a bond. So we're only going to be doing the present value of both subtypes. We're going to do present value of a single amount and the present value of an annuity. So when a company needs cash, um, it can issue bonds. So individuals pay cash to the company and the company promises to recur turn cash to the bondholders via periodic interest payments and the principal amount at the end of the bond's life. So let's assume that the company issues a $1 million 10% semi-annual three-year bond. Cash is paid to the bondholder as follows. So the company is going to pay to the bondholder $50,000 every interest payment period. The six month interest payment period will be um, a million to face value times interest. This is the purdy again, principal times rate times time. And it's six over 12 because it's semi annual. This term semi annual means it's every six months. So times six over 12. So this amount does not change. Finally, the company will pay the million dollar face value back to the investor at the end of the bond's life. So there's two payment streams. I, see if you can spot the single amount payment. What is the single amount payment? Look at the timeline. Correct. It's just a million dollars. You only see it once. Which payment is the annuity payment where you see that amount more than once? Correct. It's the 50000 So now we know which amounts are going to be present valued using which subtype. One with the single amount and then one with the annuity subtype. So we would need to know both, need both tables. So the total cash paid to the investor would be a million three on an undiscounted basis if you add up all these cash flows. So the issue price of the bond is going to vary and it's going to be based on the market rate of interest. So this is going to be very crucial when we, when we present value a bond, we always use the market rate of interest. So in this particular case, the market rate is 8%. And if you go back to the bond, we know that this is a 10% stated rate. So there's two interest rates in a bond problem, the stated rate. And the only time we use the stated rate is to use this for calculating the interest payment. We always use the stated rate, the PERDI, the principal times rate times time. However, when we go to discount the bond and present value it, the discount rate we're going to use is going to be the market rate of interest. So the market rate is 8%. So let's go through, and the first step is to present value the face amount. The face amount, right, since this is a semi-annual bond, we need to make an adjustment to the interest rate. Since it's paid every six months, we have to divide the market rate by two, because it's semi-annual, so the, I, the interest rate would be 4%. And since it's a three-year bond paid every six months, 
we multiply the number of years times 2, so n equals 6. Very important when it's semi-annual, multiply the number of years by 2 and divide the market rate of interest by 2 as well. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong factors and you'll get the wrong present value factor when you look it up in the table. So we have to make that adjustment first. So the 8 becomes 4 and the 3 becomes 6. So now all we need to do is look up the present value of a dollar, a single amount, for n equals 6, i equals 4. We would get this present value factor, multiply it together, and the present value of the lump sum is 793.10. In step two, we're going to present value now. Remember, the principal times rate. Use the coupon rate here. Notice it's not this rate, the market rate. It's the coupon rate times 112 would give us the $50,000. So we're going to have an annuity. So the subtype's an annuity. Again, for the same n. So we're going to double the number of years, so six. And we're going to have the market rate by two, divided by two is four. So we'll look up the present value of an annuity table for 6 and 4, and you'd get to 5.2414 or 262.107. The final step is quite simple. All we do is we add step 1 and step 2 together, and that would be what the issue price of this bond is. In this case, you'll notice the issue price is $1,052,417, which is higher than the face value which means this is a premium bond. So since the market rate of interest right, is below the stated rate of interest, this would mean that the company's bond will sell above face value. We discount always using which rate? Correct, market rate of interest. And since the market rate is lower, the dis present value of the cash flows is going to be higher above face value, which we see is here is the premium situation. Now let's just make a slight change and let's say now, so the present value of all these cash flows is a million fifty two. Now let's change the market rate to twelve percent. So again we're going to make the same adjustment. We're going to divide the market rate by two or six. The number of periods doesn't change. We double it to six because it's semi annual. However now we have a new factor to look up in the present value table. So step one is just going to be six periods at six percent. So this is our new factor. Multiply it together. Step two, same 50,000 except now we have to look up six years at six percent. We'll get the 4.91732. Multiply it together. And now we do step three, we just add step one and step two together. And we'll notice now that these add up below face value because the market rate is above the stated rate. And since we have a higher market rate, as the market rate goes up, more discounting is taking place, so the present value of the cash flows go below the face value. This is a discount bond. This is also the proceeds the company would raise. You should note that the bond market is a lively market and it's traded and it's open just like a stock market. Bonds trade just like stocks. Um, generally bonds sell in denominations of $1,000. And the market rates of interest affect bond prices. So again, the present value of these cash flows would be 950 because the market rate is higher. So when the market rate is greater than the coupon or stated rate, the bond will sell at a discount. That's the first way you could tell whether it's going to be a premium or discount is compare the market rate to the stated rate. And remember, we only use the stated rate to calculate the coupon interest. We do not use it to discount the bonds. We must use the market rate and adjust the market rate for if it's a semi-annual bond. So how do we record this it discount bond that we issued for 950A26? Well, the company would get a lot of cash in the door but it would also have a big liability on its balance sheet called bonds payable for the same amount. So on the uh, accounting equation identity, we'd see assets go up big, cash, and we'd see liabilities go up big. So discount or premium. Can we determine whether we have a discount or premium by just comparing the market rate of interest to the bond stated rate of interest? Let's look at bond one. Market rate's eight, stated rate is 10. Do we have a discount or a premium? Think about it. 
what rate do we discount at? 8%, which is lower than stated rate. So in this particular case, we discount with this. It's, so it's a smaller number, so less discounting takes place. So that means you'd have a premium, correct? Over here, your market rate is higher than your stated rate. So that means more discounting is taking place. So you'd end up discounting this present value would be below face value or a discount. And when the market rate is equal to the stated rate, you have a face value bond. Not too shabby, not too hard, right? Well, this is a very, uh, hopefully helped you to understand this problem. I will come back with a short example uh, from some brief exercises um, on how this particularly works.